Okay, folks, welcome. Monday evening painting session. And this is where we left off uh, yesterday. Yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening, wherever we're at. We've got uh, these eight crossbowmen for the Papal Army. We've got um, three of them done. And we have another three right here that are on their way. So this is what we're going to pick up where we left off. Hopefully. Let's see if I can find all my things that where I left them at. Tony home and I'm still at work. Yep. Story of your life. I've been home too. Yep, I couldn't wait to get home and change clothes and shower. Not necessarily in that order. Shower first, then change clothes. This can be here, but we can lose that. And this one can be here. All right. These guys are halfway done. Something like that. All right, let's put these guys down. And put this here. All right, we'll wait for people to show up here. Don't know how long I'll be on here. It depends how, how long you guys keep me awake and interacting because otherwise uh, I could just, I'm on low energy today. Change clothes in the shower. Not me, but there's people that do that. <laughs> Think of anything crazy. There's people that do that. Uh, the crossbow. Are you going to be blowing all over the place? I mean, I know the fan's on high, but... Jeez. Maybe I distract too easy. I know that's the case. But, you know what? I got started. It's going to be a false start. See, at the end of the day yesterday, this was coming up. We need to put more water on this so we can use this. So, I will be right back. It'll take about a minute. Probably less than a minute. But definitely need to do that. That's going to be problems later on. Okay. Now, the wooden color that we used, I believe was monster brown. Should be here handy. I mentioned I don't really like these army painter paints, but I do use them. So... Um, I already have them, so I might as well use them up. All right. I don't like them not because of their color selection. They just, they behave, they behave in a not, I'm not as happy with how they behave as opposed to Vallejo. As opposed to most Vallejos, because there's still some Vallejos that I don't like how they behave very much. Their metallics, and I'm not super fond of their metallics, of Vallejos metallics. I'm not super fond of their yellow. Of course, there's very few yellows that are worth a damn. Can't think of any, as a matter of fact. They always have their issues. So, well, we know that going in, so we can kind of plan accordingly. Now, this particular brush is freaking awesome. 
and I've been using it for faces. So let me not go down the rabbit hole of putting that, using that for something. I tightened this chair. Why is it still creaking? Jeez. Before one of the shows yesterday, I watched a video. What do you got to do to keep your chair from creaking? It's like, hey, try tightening it. I'm like, okay. So I turned it upside down. And all kinds of, all kinds of things were loose. Not tremendously loose, but I could turn them quite a bit more. So I figured, okay, well, that'll fix it. I need to just dip the whole thing in uh, silicone um, spray lubricant. That'll fix it. Get all the spots. <laughs> all right. Let's mix this and good. We've got some black that's still alive. It's alive. Let's find us a spot to Oh, let's lift it up here a little bit. Okay. Let's get some black here. And the cool color. Uh oh, what just gotta say? I'm gonna report you to your supervisor. Hey, Serb General should be getting mounted tonight. Excellent. Excellent. Is that on a live webcam or is that going to be a private show? <laughs> and he's going to get mounted. <laughs> That's a fun army. Serbian Empire. It's like what, book 422 or something like that. That's a cool army. I think you're going to enjoy playing that one. should have mixed a bigger batch of this stuff. The earlier you do these colors, the, um, in other words, the more black they end up having, or the, or the more darkener they have, the more you use of them. Um, the last colors you use, or not you, but the last colors I use end up being the least amount of paint. Uh, you're covering everything with this first color. And then as you go up, you lighten lighten up this color, you use less and less. So might as well just do the core the bottom color in all of them. They can tackle with your Hungarians. If they can, they'll probably kick their butt. My, my Hungarians have a terrible record. I don't know why. Well, they can't all be Burgundians. They can't all be Burgundians in their win record. And the Turks, you'll have to dumb your Hungarians down. You'll have to dumb your Serbs down so they can fight my Turks. Need to use them. Um... Can you replace those um, those fast bow with Saloy? That's what it would take. There's one thing that the Ser that the Ottomans can't deal with. It's a bunch of bow. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to have any more caffeine today, so 
Hopefully I can flap my gums enough to stay stay uh, awake. I mean, it's only 6.30, so. In a perfect world, we'll get these three guys done. So if I get to the end of these three guys and we're done, then I'm calling it a night. We can work on the last two eh, tomorrow or the next day. Hopefully, knock on wood, we can get these two stands by the end of next weekend. And then possibly play with them on Monday. We'll have to see. silver show in there not a big deal but I know it's there easy enough to fix well, good evening folks happy happy Monday everybody dreads Mondays the way I look at it is at least in my schedule I've had a couple days off by the time Monday rolls around it's Fridays I don't care for Especially like the beginning of the day on Friday. Nobody wants to do anything. You're tired from the week. I mean, sure, you have the next day off, but... You know, you got to get through this day before you worry about the next one, so... I'm not a Friday fan. Oh, we did all three, huh? Well, I'll be damned. All right, let's kick it up. As I like to say, TGIF, that was created by some bastard that worked four times. And he liked Friday because he didn't have to work on it at all. So I mentioned earlier, papal armies were not known for winning battles. So, if these guys have a losing record, I'm playing them right. <laughs> I'm playing them right. Anywho, if that's the case, we get these guys done, we'll have some more games maybe to film on a week from now. Oh, 
Hello, Kevin from Arizona, Stan. Let me do one check. Let's make sure that this thing's charging so we don't have the problem like we did yesterday. Fully charged, perfect. Yeah, it's the camera. It charges ever so slowly. It's at forty six percent. And I bet by the time I'm done, if I if I'm on here for let me just throw two hours out there, it'll probably only go up four percent. Because it's constantly streaming things too. So and it's connected to the computer. It doesn't get as much juice through the cord on the computer as it does against the wall, but you need that connection to the computer so you can feed the stuff directly to to OBS. So All right, let's kick this up a notch higher. <laughs> no games tonight. No, no games tonight. Nope. No games this week. No, priority is getting these guys done. Need to do them for a show, even if... Well, I don't need to do these guys for a show. I need to knock these guys out of the way so I can do the next army for the show. A show which we may or may not have because things are changing every any moment. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you heard you talk about it. The problem is, is if I go and and play tonight, I'm going to have to. I, I'm not painting. And not only am I not painting, but then I have a video to edit when I get back that's also not painting. And it just sets me back too far. So um, when we're here at crunch time for the next for this convention, which we're, I don't know, five weeks away or something like that, we've got to finish these guys and do another army. I don't want to fool around and get stuck not having them done. So. I'm doing it for your guys' own good, so I don't not have a book one army. So we got to get that book one army done finally. And if these guys aren't done by next week, there probably won't be any. I probably won't game next week either. But I'm pretty sure I should be able to get these guys done. What's the next what's the next army then? Book one army? Yes. I already have one figure painted. Uh, book one fifteen, Amorites. Later Amorites, I think. Put him over here. Why is he not on screen? There we go. I painted him while I was waiting for the crossbow Menda to, to get done. Yeah, this will be all Essex figures. So, yeah, we got one of the tournaments of the event that it's called Bronze Age Beatdown. And it's everything 1201 BC and earlier. So, that's the plan. That's the plan to get them done, so... So what happened is, is these crossbowmen 
were supposed to come in, say, three weeks ago. It was might have been two weeks ago. Anyways, it was a little while ago. And they sent me the wrong figure packs. So I couldn't roll right into them. So I... After I was done with the with the litter stand for the Pope, I just started working on these um, the these Amorites, and as soon as I got involved in them, of course the replacement crossbowmen, which are these, came in. So I want to get these papal guys done so we don't have to go back to them. Although I am I'm pretty sure I'm gonna at some point build a a knight general for this army. I just don't have the figure for it right now. I know Kurosan makes a guy that would work for it. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll order them a little later. I'm not worried about that right now. Right. But I didn't want to stop doing what I was doing with these guys and then roll right into these Amorites because, um, you know, I got to get these guys done also, you know. So. Very nice as usual. Thank you. We'll see. We'll see if we can do them justice. I'm looking forward to painting them because I have to, pull a lot of stuff out of my nether regions. They're a pretty boring looking army, generally, so. Mike B, speaking of tournaments, do you pick the elements for your army before the tournament starts or before each game? So, before the tournament starts. So you sign up the way we play in Florida and the way I've always played in every convention I've been in, you pick, um, you pick if your if your army has options. You pick the um, the twelve elements that you're going to use, and then you can't change them from from event to event. I mean, you know, it's just from one event, so it's usually only three games. So, so three games you're going to be playing the version of that army. The only exception is any units that have like a single slash, like for instance, um, the later Bung um, the early Burgundian army can have several troops that can either be dismounted blades or dismounted knights um if they they have they they basically you you show up with both of them since it's still the same unit and you play you either dismount you either um set them up dismounted already or you set them up as knights um if you have the single slash obviously if you have a double slash you can dismount in the middle of the game but they have to de they have to deploy mounted but that's the only exception. Um, and there's not that many armies that have that. You pretty much have to stick stick with it for the whole thing. Generally, there's a way you'd want to play the army anyway. So it's not very it's not that restrictive. Um, but yeah, that's the way I've always seen it seen. Otherwise it's too crazy. But we'll see. We'll see if the if the show goes on. Things are starting to people are starting to panic. I can see the the I can feel the pulse on how people are reacting and that's still another five weeks away, so anything could happen. I'm just glad that I don't need to play as much as other people do. We play every week, generally. All right, let's lighten this thing up. That's how my that's how my schedule was playing DBA from 2004 when I started till about 2010. I only played at shows. And that sucks, because um, I didn't have anybody here in town. So you know, you play a game, and then you gotta wait freaking six months how to play the game again. So that's no good. Whew. Hmm. That yawn.
At least this time I've been drinking black coffee because I'm famous for drinking black coffee and still yawn and fall asleep. What else is new? Um, I don't know. I'm awfully tired today. I feel like I only got three hours of sleep last night, and that wasn't the case. trying to give them the appearance that they're made of wood. Actually, one of my favorite things to do is to make things look like they're made out of a material that they're not. bits now. Hold on, I think I'm being summoned.
the problem when you're not here alone? You know, you never know what kind of interruptions could happen. Okay, good. More people showed up since I left. Whatever the hell that means. <laughs> Whatever the hell that means. No, we got a lot. We got lots of armies that we want to do. Lots of armies that we want to do. So, and normally I'd be a little skeptical. Like, you know, I don't want to get too carried away, and you know, maybe build too many armies, and then realize I don't want to play this game anymore. But I'm pretty sure that I'm still going to be using them no matter what I do. I'm still going to be using these um, these armies, and even if I go and play something else instead, ten years from now. That's funny. This one has this paint on it. I don't remember this one having that kind of paint. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and clean this brush while we're at it. I don't remember what you were laughing at, what I what you found funny. <laughs> but um Yeah, I um at some point maybe, it may be 20 years from now. I may not play DBA anymore. But you better believe that whatever I play will use these same army lists. I mean, unless they come out with DBA 4 and it's even better, you know. Which I don't expect that they would. You know. I could see a long time from now. You know, I'm mainly a painter. I do a fair minute about a gaming, but I've just accepted that this game isn't perfect. But what it doesn't, what it does, even though it's not perfect gameplay, it does allow us to sit down and start playing immediately. You know, not. There we go. I wonder why I had that old stuff on there. I don't know. Maybe I had just left left it on the bristles a little too long. And yeah, this stuff works okay. Uh, it's rather expensive. It's like $10 for this, but it will probably last a long time. Um, it's really good at loosening the paint. About reshaping the bristles, I don't know. I've had some sit that I've, I've tried to, to, to work it and leave them overnight. And once it starts getting a curve and these cheap-ass brushes... You, they're done for. I mean, you're going to continue having that problem. It's it's it can't really be fixed. Maybe with better brushes, but these El Cheapos that I have here, you know, um, do I have an aversion to to book one list? I've talked about that. Um, my favorite books are four, three, two, and one. Okay, because my preferred thing is is to take. A lots of information that we know about something, but putting my own spin on it. So as you go back in time, you, you generally, generally, there's exceptions. You generally know less and less, less information on uh, how units were painted, um, the history of them, the battles they were in, commanders, etc. Okay. And less and less reference material that that's cited in. And um, so when you're looking at book one stuff, you know, it's very, very limited what's known. And it's very, very limited who makes figures for all those armies. Now, you could probably cludge just about all of them together. But, you know, you're going to have a lot of armies where figures are going to be wearing linen. Um, they're not going to have flags. They're not going to have shields that um, are elaborate or fun and creative to paint. Um, they're not going to have... A lot of the troops are not going to have headgear. They're, they're going to be like uh, barren headed. So, you know, if you're building a lot of troops, with, whether I'm building Amorites or I'm building um, um, Elamites or um, the Kassite Babylonians, or there's so many armies where basically their troops are going to look almost identical to each other. Um, people talk about um, building late medieval armies and making generic medieval armies that they can use for all the Europeans, whether they're French or Germans or whatever. Well, I wouldn't do that, but it makes more sense to do that almost for the 
and I, I want to say biblical. Well, biblical isn't really accurate because a lot of this, a lot of these armies are even before the Bible. You know, like the Sumerians and stuff like that. So, um, I don't have a problem with the army composition of the Book One armies, like the troop distribution. I just have a problem with they're not very exciting to paint. You know. Um, you know, I, I I get excited about paying army because they're complicated looking, not because oh I can just knock these out. Well, that's not a big incentive for me, you know. Um, and there's just not a lot of stuff that's known about what really happened. I mean, if you take out the Old Testament, we don't know jack shit. I mean, you know, you, you're left with, um, and I mean, you know, you've you've got like the Trojan War stuff, and you just have very very limited amount of things a few steelies you know obviously new kingdom egyptian a lot of stuff's done by them a lot of their stuff survived and they documented a lot of their things you know so you know quite a bit about the babylonians or the the babylonians um babylonians assyrians egyptians um who's the other guy hittites um the trojan war stuff um but there's a lot of like open like we don't know we don't know much about these guys so it's like you just have to invent too many things or they don't make uh, a lot of the figures that are distinctly different from each other so that's the problem that I have with book one is and Debellus and Tiquitatis right what is that it's in Latin you're going to play armies that are earlier than the language that the rules are written in right because Latin hadn't been invented yet in book one uh, it's probably some really early Roman stuff that's like that, but you know, generally speaking. So, um, yeah. Hey, Ben, how are you? Hey, T. Yeah, I like T. Mr. T. Vitamin T is what I like. You know what that? You know what vitamin T is, right? Tequila. <laughs> I don't like getting on a plane until I have. Uh... You know what I'm gonna say? Oh shit! Son of a bitch! Thank you. Well, I'm glad you're here. You're the only person that has a clue, including me. Thank you. There we go. It's right side up. The entire thing was backwards. Ben Wadi, the wingman. <laughs> mm. Thank you. I need to get like a big poster. Make sure the damn thing's right side up, so... Mr. Benedict, Benedict, welcome. Benedict Jeffrey, as opposed to Benedict Arnold. Yeah. It was your turn to watch me, Ben. Damn it. <laughs> oh. Mass incompetence. Oh, well. How long did we go with a, with a thing being backwards? You guys need to pay attention. It's obvious people aren't paying attention to what I'm what I'm doing. That's fine. Um, have I accidentally drunk your brush water? No, but I have had someone that painted with me that did it. See, I do like to learn from other people's mistakes. I apparently don't learn from my own because I'm still not reversing the f the thing correctly. <laughs> I'm gonna get a T-shirt that has writing on it backwards on purpose. Just to fool Ben into thinking that I'm, uh, I'd still have to, you know, paint left-handed, and that's not gonna happen, you know. Uh, no, I have not drunk b brush water. Um, I have had someone painting with me that did. It's water-based. Nothing's gonna happen, you know. Uh, it's no worse than the react. I would imagine it's no worse than the reaction. I've had soda and coffee at the same time, and thought I grabbed one and grabbed the other. Get ready to drink some diet soda, and I drink coffee instead and it's like a, mm, what did I do you know that's half that's the closest I've gotten but no I've not drank this stuff um would you like me to <laughs> Does it... yeah probably wouldn't do any harm it might actually cure me of something I might be immune to some disease or something like that by drinking that it might be worth a thought okay so uh let's do the fleshy bits on this guy you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> Damn it, man! <laughs> oh. 
you need to get those motivational posters, you know, that they have at those, you know, those cheesy motivational posters that they have in office, you know, and uh, what did I just do? Oh, there we go. And uh, instead of that is, you know, make sure the damn camera's inside. See, so I've done hundreds of videos and in a normal video, um, even when I was live streaming, I would just hook up my phone and go to town, right? I didn't have, it didn't default to being back asswards. So, um, it does on this. So if I ever drank Mountain Dew, it's about the same. No, I don't know. Mountain Dew's too sweet. Mountain Dew's too sweet. So, true story. Um, all my stories are true. Um, I would go to Historicon several years and I couldn't realize why I got, why I would get all these massive headaches. I'd get these massive headaches, I'd get them on day two, probably. And they just would never go away the whole time. I took Advil and Advil and nothing would go away. And I came to realize what was happening was... I'd end up skipping a meal, like lunch or whatever, right? Because there's, if you've ever been to Historicon, there's not really any place worth a damn to eat, you know, in a hurry. I'm not going to eat the food that they have laying around. It just, that's some creepy stuff. Anyhow, um, so I would go and get like peanut M&Ms, right? Or have a regular soda, not diet. And I was getting these sugar headaches because I never have sugar. Um, I'm not used to processing it and I would get this massive headache and I wouldn't know that it was what it was. And of course, when you get a sugar headache, um, you know, it, you, it just won't go away with medicine. So once I realized that that's what happened, cause I'm like, okay, I'm just hanging out here with folks. I'm not stressed out about anything. Why am I getting these massive headaches? And I would rather have explosive diarrhea just to say something. Than a, than a massive headache because I can't think and you know I don't do well with headaches so um, yeah I had to figure out that that's what was going on so no more regular sodas no more regular sodas no candy I never have candy um, I mean do I have sugar sure whatever's in a I mean my idea of a dessert is like a yogurt or or, um, or um, an apple or, you know, fruit, fruit stuff. Nothing excruciatingly condensed um, sugar stuff. Because it dehydrates you. And honestly, it, what happens is I end up getting angry, you know, when I have sugar. So uh, don't give me sugar. Puts me in a bad mood. So. Anyhow, fleshy bits. Yeah, I hate getting a headache. I don't deal with that well. Explosive diarrhea. Well, I can think. That's not good either. My neck aches came from neck problems. Chiropractor fixed. So I've been to a chiropractor maybe eight times in my life. I think it's the coolest freaking thing. Now, people have love-hate relationship with chiropractors. Probably, no, no doubt, there's some people out there that are doing funny medicine. But I think it's fascinating. And I every time I've gone, I've gone to try to... Um, learn something from the experience you know because by a time I don't like going to the doctor because it takes time away from my work day and it's a, I mean I literally step out for lunch and I come back and it's a mess right and um, but every time I go to the chiropractor I try to learn something about like what they're doing like you know pressing is there something I, I can maybe fix because by the time I get around to saying oh, I can't take it anymore I've got to go to the chiropractor and they fix it it doesn't feel like they fix it. You're, 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 um, 
your nerves have been under so much strain that it takes about a day or day and a half for them to to finally ease out what it is. So I figure as soon as I start feeling it, if I can work my neck, because that's generally what it is. Something is just slightly out of whack, at least in my case. And um, but I think it's super cool. I think that that would be a really interesting thing to go into. Um, I think it's really, really interesting. Um, so, and it makes sense because there's some things that even though they're real, just don't, I'm a very, uh, I'm not a very abstract person. So I, I don't, you know, I don't have a problem with acupuncture. Okay. I don't think I've ever done it, but I don't like the idea of, you know, you get poked on your toe to solve something wrong with your ear. It's just, they're too far away from each other. Yes, it may work, make sense to somebody else, but not to me. I'm too mundane or whatever for that to, but, but the chiropractic stuff, chiropractic stuff, I think is really, really cool. Um, I think they serve the same pig carcass every year, and that includes Cold Wars and Fallen when they were in Lancaster. You know, I love pig things, okay? Um, hell, my people brought them over. I found I found that out. I found that out recently that all the that's where all the wild hogs came from. It's like my ancestors let them run loose. You're welcome. And uh, <laughs> but it just smells bad. It, it just no, no. I mean, my go-to. I could give up. Well, I could give up meat. You know, if I had to. Okay, but the last meat I want to give up is. Is ham, ham and things like that. So um, it's just so versatile. So yeah, chiropractors are really cool. At least the one I've been to. I know there's quacks out there, and there's some crazy chiropractor videos on YouTube. I mean, just some crazy stuff. But I think it's really neat. You know, it's it's fascinating. You know. Um, And I don't think you have to have a stomach for anything. Like, for instance, I could never be a surgeon. I could never be a surgeon and cut up, cut people up. I, you need to be made of special stuff for that, you know. And um, that's not me. Be like, mm, sorry, you're gonna let's go to Tony. See, Tony, can you fix me? Uh, dude, you're gonna die. You know, uh, there's no cure for that. I, uh, I can't fix you. That's not my skill set or my uh, stomach. Yeah, we're not all made the same, and that's okay. You know, not everybody's good at everything. Remember those hot dog carts at Harrisburg? Those hot dogs were dark brown. Oh. After you've gotten your own hot dog. I don't, you don't, I don't want to eat hot dogs out. That, and they're too damn expensive. I mean, when you eat them at home, I mean, you could get good hot dogs, and you can eat, like, freaking three of them, and it's, like, not even five bucks, you know? But, yeah, who knows? Speaking of hot dogs, there's, um, there's several things I remember from my childhood. And to date myself, I'm 50. So that kind of gives you an idea of, of where I fall into. Um, but one of the things I remember the most as a kid is traveling. And I mean, a kid being like, you know, under seven years old, is we would go places and we'd stop at Howard Johnson's. And um, Howard Johnson's had a restaurant. And I remember that they had these hot dogs that came in this little tray that was made, it was like a little boat. And is made of cardboard, and the hot dog would fit in there. And I remember those things being good. Who knows if they were made out of pigs' anuses or whatever? But whatever, I didn't know any difference. It was the 1970s, and you know. Good night, Ian. Uh, sleep tight. <laughs> Check out the rest of the zany stuff we're going to be talking about tonight later. Thanks for coming by. But that's one of the things I remember from the 1970s: is going there to Howard Johnson's and getting the little boat with a hot dog, you know, on it. Um, and, um, and they had banana ice cream and I still fondly remember the banana ice cream from Howard John. I mean, if, if you went back in a time machine, I ate it now and not meant to be worth a crap, but I remember that fondly. And, um, there's an ice cream 
there's one of the there's an ice cream place that's a chain that's called um, Cold Stone Creamery, and um, what they're known for is they just get stuff and you put things and they mix it up and and they sing shit at you and you know anyhow just give me the damn ice cream right but they they have banana as one of their bases so it's it's wonderful and it reminds me of that but uh, never can get the the old hot dog taste who knows who knows what the heck it was made out of it I'm sure you probably wouldn't want to eat one of them. I did like the old breakfast buffet at the host. Bacon by the tonnage. Yeah, the only place, let's see. So I went to the host. In two, the first historic con I went to was in 2006. I went 2006, 7, 8. 6, 7, and 8. And 9. 10 was at King of Prussia. 11 was at King of Prussia. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 were all in Fredericksburg. 18 went back to Lancaster. And 19 was at the new location. Um, I never stayed at the host. The host is... You know, you just... I don't know how you guys feel about it, but you work too hard to have to stay in a shithole like that. And it's not that I want to pay a lot of stuff, but it's just like, why? And it was just always in a bad situation. Now, we would run across the street to Fuddruckers. What was it, Fuddruckers? And we'd have. And the last time we went, which was in, what was it, 2018? Because the downtown place wasn't ready. Um,. We ended up going to the freaking brewery across the street. That place was kick-ass. Um, Lancaster Brewing, that place was really kick-ass. But, um, but I remember when we came back to the host in 20... Because I only go to Historicon. The other two cons were... They're, in this, they're really close to our, Oca our Orlando convention, so it doesn't make any sense to go to them. But when we went back, the hotel was under destruction that it's like it looked like freaking it looked like Stalingrad except it didn't have a bunch of Nazis and communists running around it was just absolutely ridiculous that you know that we have to play in some place like that now the downtown place in in uh, Lancaster yeah that place is freaking nice that's how it should be you know um, you know we're traveling 14 and a half hours why should we travel 14 and a half hours in a car to go to a shit show you know, I mean, that may not be important for some people, but, you know, I don't want to overpay for a room, but it'd be nice to say, like, at that place, there's no way I would bring my wife and daughter with me and stay at that, that location. It just, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing that, you know, you just work too hard to have to stay in a, in a slum like that, you know, but. Oh well, I think they're I think they're good staying in the downtown place. The downtown place is awesome, you know. But and um, anyhow, we're gonna stay last year, but you know how that went. So and we won't go in November because November's literally the worst month it could possibly be is November for me. That's anniversary month, especially especially this year where it's the big twenty. So I won't be going there. So. We got bigger things to do than go to the convention. And hell, I mean, the way things go, there may not be one, you know, um, with all these last minute changes and so forth. So, yeah, that Lancaster brewing, brewing was awesome. I even brought a, a couple of those. What do you call those big, big jugs? Growlers. I brought two growlers back home on our way out. I forget what, what they had. They had some dark beer that was spectacular. I said, oh, the wife's got to try this. It was wonderful. So hopefully you guys do get a Historicon in November. Hopefully it doesn't go so damn well that they'll say, you know what, we'll just keep doing Historicon in November because I just won't go to another one because it's just it's not it's not a workable solution for me. 
As much as I would love to go to Pennsylvania in that cooler weather, because I am a fan of cool weather. Um, because in July, it's just as hot there as it is here. So. We'll try again next year. I didn't even know about Historicon until Marty Schmidt told me about it around 2005. I didn't know about it. Now, if I didn't play DBA or some tournament thing like that, I probably wouldn't go because the way, you know, to play games and stuff and to buy things, I mean, especially now, there's not a huge incentive to... Every year I've gone, there has been less and less vendors of stuff that I'm interested in. Um, historical 15 millimeter stuff, ancients, medieval, yeah. I mean, they used to have, I think the first year that I went... Old Glory was there with all their million packs that they had. And, and, and every year there's been less and less people that carry stuff. And, and I have more and more things every year. So I need impulse buying less and less. So um, it's, not a, it's not a buying incentive for me. And, um, you know, that whole ticket system, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of that. You may want to play something and it's full or you wait around or you sign up for it in advance and then you find out the game doesn't look isn't very visually appealing or worse yet everybody's playing there as a butthole and you got to deal with them for like four hours and so if you walk away from that game you know it just doesn't i like historicon a lot but i like it for what we do with this silly game that we play because we're constantly playing from start to finish you know we don't um we don't miss a beat. But hopefully it goes off this year so you guys get your historic on. But hopefully it doesn't, nobody gets a wild hair up their ass saying, you know, we're just going to move the big four day convention to November. Because that would really suck. It needs to be the long one and, and so we could make the drive. And it's worth our drive, you know? So. I mean, it's a 14 and a half drive. It doesn't seem that long, honestly. When we just get in the car, we leave at 5 a.m. The drive back is a lot easier. Um, the drive there is a pain because if you leave at 5 a.m., you get around D.C., the area that everybody gets off work. So you can't do it in one. You can't do it in one day because of the traffic. You can't do it in one day because of the traffic at the last 20 percent of the drive. Okay. Um, but on the way back, it's a Sunday and you leave at 5 a.m. and you're going around Baltimore and D.C. at 7 or so in the morning on a Sunday. Yeah, there's no traffic, you know, but getting there, you have to make you have to do it in two trips so, in two days. So, But we know that not a big deal. Try to hit something along the way, you know. Can you have tournaments without convention? Sure. Sure. If they cancel our convention in Orlando, we're still going to do our tournaments here in town. I already have a backup plan in place. So, worst case scenario, we'll do it at Mitch's house. I don't want to do that. It's going to be hot and there's going to be too many people to get in there. But, you know, we have a backup plan in place. We'll, we'll do our games for sure. You know, the convention has, our convention in Orlando has, say, 400 people to go to it. 390 people aren't playing DBA. You know, they're playing other things. They're just hanging out. So, you know, we don't need that huge area to do our tournaments. So, we'll still do our tournaments. It might just be very few of us, but whatever. Better than not doing it. So. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. Still not going to work that Friday. Still taking that day off. So that right there is a win.
that right there is a win. In my book. But when I started going to Historicon, I'd only get to play at conventions. So I tried to learn a, learn a game. A game that's as difficult to learn as DBA, because there's nothing easy about it. It's abstract as all get out. And I'm only getting to play it twice a year. Three times a year. Yeah, you you got to play like every week, every month. you got to do your own local games to stay up to date with. You know, so you don't go and... It's not about winning. It's about, you know, knowing what the hell you're doing. You know, um, somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose, you know, but thinking you can do A and then you can't do that because you're, you don't know the rules. Now, that's still frustrating. So. Yeah, but I didn't know about Historicon until 2005. Probably would have never gone if it wasn't for DBA. Oh, you mean I can play with my figures all weekend long? Awesome. Sign me up. I mean, that is the appeal for me. It's not necessarily the period. It's not necessarily the rule set. It's the, I could bring my own toys that I paint, that I move around, and I don't have to worry about somebody else damaging them. You know? And, and I can play several times a quick game with them. So you get a lot of use out of them. And it's the only thing I've ever played that's tournament based. I know lots of people have bad idea, bad experiences in tournaments. I don't. I'm kind of I'm kind of new to it. I kind of am new to it. I mean, that's all we play now, but. You have good friends that would almost always meet up at HMGS cons twice or three times a year. We've been going since the late 80s. I wish I could have. I wish I would have known about it. But we're so damn far away from it. I had a bad experience at a convention in 1996. I supplied all the stuff for a game and somebody was ham-fisted with my stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to deal with this stuff anymore. And they were a butthole too. And I'm like, I don't want... I mean, I showed up with my own core people. And then we got a few more players, and it was just like, you know, this, this just isn't worth it. And then I stopped going to cons for like five years. And then I went back in around 2001. And, um, yeah, I haven't missed one since, so. We all met playing Warhammer's Ancient Battles way back when. Why'd people stop playing that? I wonder why people stopped playing playing that. There was a huge amount of people that were playing that. Even in, who was it? There was a lot of players that were playing that that I remember seeing. Even as late as King of Prussia, people were playing that. Yeah. I don't know. People get nomadic and I know one person in particular. They started playing DBA. Then they got out of that, sold their stuff, got into a different scale, different game, got that, sold their stuff. Now they're into something. You know, it's like they're always constantly, you know, moving around. And I'm like, I don't want to reinvent or get rid of these things that I've spent so much, so many hundreds of hours doing it. It's just not a fun game. Well, that's no good then. You booked hotel rooms here in Ohio, rented the meeting room, and we all met up in July, and we had a great time. It's going to be an annual event. Good. It is about the people. 
It is. I mean, I can play games anytime. I mean, I can get my gaming on by playing stuff on the computer. I mean, it's not the same, but, you know. They died out because the rules didn't keep the game fresh. Huh. I've got them. Um, I got several of the books, but I didn't get them for that game. What do I got? I got the Hannibal one. I got the Punic Wars one. Uh, I got the Golden Gate Beyond the Golden Gate, uh, the Byzantine one. I got the El Cid one. That was the first one I got for ideas to pay him. Um, is that all I have? That might be the only three that I have. Yeah. I wanted to get the Dracula one, but I waited too long. It's ex extremely expensive. I'm like, nah. I'm good. So. And nobody's actually done the service of posting a pirated version online. I mean, I wouldn't do that. But if there's a pirated version of something that's out of print, yeah, I'll take a look at it. You know, I, I don't espouse doing things like that. I, I would prefer they don't put things out of print. You know? So. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pirate and put something on. You know, it's just not not mine but I just wanted to get ideas for it because the Dracula the Dracula well I already did the Ottomans but the Dracula guys are coming at some point I'll be doing that army within the next two years for sure and they're probably not going to do really well but that's okay maybe they'll be like my Irish and kick ass and nobody will be expecting that okay Yeah, I never played Warhammer anything. So the fact that they have a similar mechanics to Warhammer isn't really an appeal to me um, because it's not like I need that familiarity because I'm not familiar with Warhammer at all. So. Help the authors Alexander Punic Wars was working on writing a Caesar supplement when Games Workshop ended Warhammer. See, that's that's what Games Workshop likes to do. They ended like several things that before I even had a chance to get into. It's like if I'm putting this much effort into a game, you don't get to like not stop making things and take my effort and throw it in the garbage can, you know? It's like we're gonna have we're gonna have words. Core rulebook is online, Games Workshop released it for free when they stopped production. Rick Priestley even had it and Warrant Master Ancients on his website before the site went down. Yeah. The RG last edition was very different deviation. Old versions. Then Phil wrote DVA and DVM made WRG players flock there. Never played WRG. Never did. I'm old enough to have played it. I just... I, I, I never even... I didn't know anything about ancients and medieval combat stuff until 2004. Just wasn't a, just wasn't a thing. And I can't imagine, I can't imagine playing something like WRG Ancients in 15 millimeter. Way back when, when there was a lot less figure manufacturers and you needed a hell of a lot more figures to make an army, you're gonna have a lot of figures that are the same figure in the same pose in your army. Um, that's just like extremely redundant. Now, I don't mind that if you're doing, like, Roman Legionnaires, but, you know, um, yeah, but. The next Ancients game I play that's not DBA will have combat where you don't have to conform to the other stand. That, that, that's a given. Or I'll just continue playing DBA. Um, 
that is that's a given. That's that's not a non-compromising thing. So I think that 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 alone is just makes the game feel too. Ab it just makes it feel too abstract. Like I'm doing something other than fight a battle. That whole perfect alignment thing is just weird. It always was to me. That was always even more weird than the fact that Light Horse or Saloy don't don't engage at a distance. You know, a lot of people have problems with that. I, I think the the um, the the perfect alignment thing is just too structured. You might as well just play on a grid then. WG still played in the U.S., but it's a different name. Yeah, it's called... Ah, um, uh, oh, snap. Don't remember what it's called. Warrior. It's called Warrior. There it is. Warrior's the name for the WG. I had to clean it up a bit, and there's less barkeries. Okay, Jeff, good night. And you're going to bed early. I know, you probably have more important things to do. That'll work. Thanks for coming by. I'll share you. You know, Barkeries. The problem with the problem with Barker's rules isn't necessarily the way he words things. It's the fact that everything is just jumbled together. And it's not and nothing's ever oh, I don't know how the other rules are, but nothing's ever repeated a second time. So you may be looking for a special situation of how a unit moves, and it's not a movement, it's in the description of the unit the movement at the beginning of the game. You know, so um, yeah, there's a group that plays Warrior here in Florida, but they toy, play in 25 millimeter. So, more figures in a bigger scale—that's that's a bad combination for me. It's a good way to get nothing done. I'd rather have more armies and. Less figures. You know, it's not like I just want to paint 30 figures. I just want to paint different type of stuff. You know, if I have a, 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 a game that all of a sudden I have to play hundreds of, paint hundreds of figures for one army, I'm only going to have like two armies ever, you know, instead of having many. So. I'm still going to say that of all the games I've ever played, DBA is definitely the hardest game because it's just so damn abstract. Early Roman early Imperial Army of WRG. That's why I have five armies of them in the TBA. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep.
All right. Next phase. I like Cardinal Guerra, but I don't have a local opponent. I enjoy DBA because of the game length, size, and many things. I like because of the game length, size, and many of the things Tony dislikes. I think I know what you're saying. I didn't think you worded it properly. You like Art de Guerra. But you like the size and many of the things I dislike, and you know I just don't have uh, I just don't have the time to. Um, I would, you know what? I think that we would love to play DBMM small scale. What did you call it? A hundred points. I just don't have it in me to play a hundred hundred games wrong. I'm just I'm not going to learn another Barker East type game. Just too damn abstract. I don't, I don't have it in me anymore. You know, maybe I've just gotten older. Maybe I've just been... It's just very unsatisfactory to play a game wrong. And it's just very hard to get right the first time. Art de la Guerre has some interesting things. Including skirmishers. And... I don't know if... I don't know light horses the same way. But skirmishers definitely can shoot at a distance. But they have the same... Uh, they have the same uh, lining up thing. So I'm like, why should I learn that? It's still going to have that problem. That, and it just, it seems like a total rip off of Phil's work. I'm going to come right out and say it. Somebody gave me a copy of it, and I was going to, I'm like, I don't want this. I'll go buy it. And I looked through the army list, and they have a thing in DVMM where, um, where it has, uh, what, does he, what does he call it? Brilliant Generals. And in the army list of Art de la Guerre, it's the same freaking guys that Phil put in DBMM. I don't know how the hell they didn't get sued. Um, so it's just an obvious ripoff of his work, you know. And you know, I just believe I just believe in giving people the you know, and you're charging for it, you know. So. You just got to give people credit where credits due. You can't just take other people's work. Forget legal or whatever it just doesn't sit well with me but at the end of the day you know if people wanted to play that i'd probably play it along with them but um it, it doesn't have the con you still have to conform to fight so i'm like i'm i'm not going to give that i'm not going to i'm not going to learn how to play it if somebody's putting on a game of it you know which i don't think anybody would you know but um there's probably some things that i like about it but the army list man that just really rubbed me the wrong way and I don't know Phil or anything, you know, but I mean, I met him one time. It just, just seemed, it just seemed wrong. It just seemed wrong. So wasn't your war of the roses considered DBMM? No, it's big battle DBA. No. And that was Marty's war of the roses. It wasn't mine. Just so you know. So if it's good, it's his fault. <laughs> if it's bad, it's his fault. <laughs> The thing with the big games is, I've played big games before. What makes DBA DBA to me is the fact that it's a small game with your 12 stands that you can sit, not move, not stretch over a table, and you know, in 50 minutes it's over and go on to something else. No other game I ever played was like that. That's what makes DBA a unique. You know, if you start like reaching over a table with lots of troops, 
hold on, I'm going to deploy and have this battle plan. Why don't you guys leave for 15 minutes and come back? It turns into every other war game that I've played, you know. Uh, it may appeal to some people, that doesn't appeal to me, so. Um, DVM was brilliant, but the combat system outcomes gave me a headache. Yeah, there's got to be an easier way to do it. It wasn't as bad as the, the conforming, man. The conforming drives me bananas. The conforming and the all the all the shoehorning that has to happen for the conforming is just drives me crazy. Even in DBA, it, that has to be easier. I, I would be a proponent of if I was going to make my own rule set, which I you know I have no intention of doing anytime soon. It would and it would be free. Also, I'm not going to charge for work that I'm going to do inspired by other people's stuff, but um, they wouldn't have any army lists. You just use them out of 3.0. Done. Okay. And now you got to, now you got to buy Phil's stuff. You know, you got to buy his, his money. Um, but uh, I would make it so that conforming is second nature. Going into combat and, and lining up however you do it is really easy to do. So now you can spend time on uh, the combat results a little more. The combat results could be a little bit more complicated than DBA are. Not, not tremendously different, but they can add another layer of detail there. Um, which, you know, it's kind of like when I talked about playing naval games. I, I came from a background of playing naval games. And there's nothing more frustrating than spending a lot of time trying to calculate hits that never happen. You know, once you land a hit on another vessel and you're, and you're calculating where it's going to land and does it penetrate that, that stuff's interesting. It's real. You can visualize a shell going and hitting the conning tower, at, you know, the, of, of an, uh, the vertical armor on the conning tower and seeing if it penetrates. That, that kind of stuff is fun to, to figure out. But spending an inordinate amount of time to see what your hit chance is for shells and then you roll them and they don't land, that's time wasted. Same thing with the conforming, you know, you could, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, I think DBA should be 12 elements plus a general stand. So you like a separate general. I do too. I like a separate general as well. And I think that I would be a proponent for armies could be between say nine stands and 15. Not every army has us have the same amount of elements. Now, how you would do it, I don't know. But I'm okay with, you know, 15 elements. That's not crazy. If you buy, if you build all options for an army, you're sometimes painting more than 15 elements anyways. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, I, like a, I like a separate general. It looks cool. The, too many people make separate actual guys now for it to not, it, it's, it's neat. I like it. So, wasn't that how the first 1.0 is? 1.0 is you could attach a general, to any, any unit could have the general. So Mitch could have his famous artillery general. Of course, he still couldn't um, literally land it. So he'd still be cheating. Artillery general. Like the WRG, the greater range of unit types. Yep. You know, when you're learning to play this game, the easiest thing to remember is how far certain units move and what their combat numbers are. That's stuff that's common to every rule set, okay? That's easy to remember. Um, you do that no matter what game you're playing, whether it's uh, how far you range or how much you penetrate at certain distances, how much damage you do, um, whether you're playing a civil war game or a naval war game or a modern war game, it's, it all have aspects of that that you're used to looking at and remembering. So having more troop types doesn't complicate the rules. What complicates the rules is these weird abstractions of, you know, if you're of, of conforming and so forth and outcome moves and 
wish a lot of that stuff was a little bit more second nature and oh well with all that said i've never had as much fun playing any miniature war game or you know any war game i'll go out and say it any war game i've had no more fun playing it than than dba for all dba's things that aren't perfect you know the fact that if you're playing in a tournament and you play you get the luck of the draw and you get some guy who's a pain in the ass to deal with you occasionally run into that i'll be honest with you i've probably only encountered maybe four people i would never want to play again i'm, I'm maybe stretching it. it may actually only be three um you know if you only have to deal with them you only have to deal with them for 50 minutes you know, it's it's got a lot of pluses. It's got a lot of pluses. So, could it be better? Absolutely. You know, but... Somebody said, well, you guys should do an unofficial guide to DBA 3.0. I'm not going to do it. It's not my responsibility. And that's a lot of work. And that's a lot of work of things that I don't enjoy. Um, I don't enjoy rules. I don't. I like to play by the rules, but I'm not a rules lawyer type person. I'm not an any kind of lawyer type person, so, um, and that's more work than just coming up with your own set of rules, you know, and then you run into the, well, that's not how I interpret it or whatever. I've just gotten to the point where it's like, I don't care how you guys play the game and wherever you're from, this is how we've always played it. Everybody we encounter it plays like this, and this works for us, and until they come up with some kind of a ruling on how a certain aspect is we're just going to keep playing the same way we are because you know i'd have to retrain everybody and then oops i'm sorry we read that wrong you can go back to doing it how you did before and have to retrain you know this doesn't pay enough to do that you know so uh you had good fun with battle tech i don't i'm not a fan i'm not a fan of games that use the bell curve the 2d6 system you know, the Snake Eyes boxcar stuff, you know, where your average roll is seven. I'm, I'm not a big fan of those games. But it doesn't mean I won't play them. What I won't play is games that won't have dice. Like card activation stuff. What, what's that game everybody loves? Combat Commander. I played a couple games of that. And yeah, we'd probably really like that game. Except I want to roll my own damn dice, damn it. I don't want to pull a card for the results. I don't mind pulling cards for, you know, random events and things like that. But the, every single result, like, oh, here's this beautiful card that's, you know, we'll use this because it's card shape. That's all this stuff on it. But what you're going to use is these numbers down here. But you end up seeing all these things that you're never going to play. It like, oh, here's a really cool Stuka attack you, you could have gotten. But instead, you decided to pull this card at the time. You only use these dumb numbers at the bottom. And it, that, that's just too frustrating. That's too, like... Uh, carpet pulled out from under you kind of thing. It doesn't really work for my personality type. But lots of people like that game, you know? Lots of people don't like that game because it's very abstract and you can't control things. Those, n not abstract, that you can't control a lot of things. We like that kind of stuff. Our game group likes things you can't control, okay? the ca It's controlled chaos is what we like, okay? We're going to make try to make the best what we can with a, with a situation that's just kind of arisen. We like those kind of things. Um, I just like to roll dice. I don't. I don't want to pull cards for a dice instead of a dice result. Because no matter how your dice would have to be really, really skewed to be more skewed than um, a properly shuffled um, card pull. It's. I think it's very hard to get a good randomization on on a shuffling a deck of cards, as opposed to a die roll. WRG used to have an average die two, three, three, four, four, five. What's wrong with ones and sixes? I don't know. Sounds like somebody was scared. Maybe lots of people are scared of rolling dice. I'm not. I've rolled badly so many times that I'm like, whatever, just another one of those times. Not a big deal. Hey, somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to lose, man. As long as you're both having fun, it doesn't really matter who's winning and who's losing.
Hmm. I've heard of incidents that some guy was was cheating playing. This is before my time. Like I hadn't even played DBA yet, so it was a long time ago. But they caught some guy using a a, a die that was. Um, You know, a joke die that would always roll whatever and this person would switch it in his hand and like, man, why do you gotta go to such lengths to just play a game, man? I mean if you know you're gonna win, why bother even playing it? Does your life suck so bad that you you, you need to win so badly in a silly game with toy soldiers? I don't know. I've never had an issue with with that kind of stuff. Add some of this in here. Well, I haven't gotten a lot done, but you guys have woken me up enough, so it's like I'm not in any danger of like falling asleep. How long will we be on here? Let me guess. Uh, an hour and a half. Uh, an hour and thirty-two minutes. Perfect. That's pretty good. I gotta use a little boys' room. I'll be right back. I I always drink a lot of liquids while I'm painting, so I always have to go to the bathroom. But that forces me to uh, to have to um, get up, you know. Be right back. Rick, welcome. Hey, you enjoying your uh, Denver Broncos hat they gave you? Or they give you a keychain? Uh, you have zero tolerance for cheaters. Absolutely. Hung them up. You cheat once, I just can't trust you ever again. You're absolutely right. And you're not overreacting. I'll always be questioning any time we play from that point on. That's right. Just get rid of them. Just add them to the pile of people you don't like. Um, don't come back again. Uh, Warhammer tournaments had players use house... Dice to defeat cheaters. Warhammer tournaments had players. So if you found out there was a cheater, they would give them loaded dice to. You know, that reminds me of um, Luke. Luke still does a lot of paintballing. And uh, it was a whole tight hammock actually oh what what they gave you for the Bronco well did it have like the logo on it or something I don't know hopefully you'd have to put any money down on that I'd be pissed I'd be pissed if I had to put money down on that um Yeah. I don't know what the hell I was saying. Get me all wound up about other... That's just... That's just dishonorable shit, man. That's like cheat. That's like sleeping with somebody's wife or... 
Or eating somebody's lunch they brought to work. Or, you know, you just don't do shit like that. Like, oh, they wouldn't let people use their own dice. Okay, well, if you got to do that, I guess. I mean, I like using my own dice because um, I generally like picking dice that go with the theme of the army. It's just another little thing. Um, I could see if you had to do that. Um, yeah. Man, it's a game where you don't win anything. Well, maybe Warhammer tournaments you do with it. You don't win anything in this. Damn people. I'm glad I won't have those people. Problem with those people. I mean, sure, we make mistakes, and sometimes, you know, one guy moves or we get the rules wrong, but, you know, we're both playing by the same set of rules. And. Sometimes you got to make rulings, and I'll be the first to admit, sometimes the rulings don't go, aren't in my favor. It doesn't really matter. It's just a game, man. You need to play it honorably. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too medieval. <laughs> the Ford brand and hammock they've been sending out. I haven't gotten one, but I have no trees where I live anyways. Well, you can have a few of mine. I don't dislike trees. I just don't believe trees should be over your your where you live. So in other words, if you have a 40 or 60, let's say you have a 60 foot tree on your property. It should be 60 feet from your house, you know, in a perfect world. Cause it just litters a bunch of stuff and then it dry rots and it, you know, and then your roof stays wet for a week and then it's things rot and the bugs come, you know. So do I hate trees? No, I just don't want them over my house. You know, and then, you know, the whole lightning factor, which, you know, this is this is a fun place for that. Yeah, you like it when the dice color matches army. Absolutely. Or, you know, you get to use my Ching Chang Chung dice when I'm using my Asian armies or what have you, or the Roman numeral dice from playing the Rome, 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 Roman armies. The Pope, I need to do a Pope dice. There's got to be a dice out there with some keys on there. Anyhow, something like that. Um, you're so addicted to dice. Every time I get new figures or a new army, I have to immediately go out and get matching dice. That's okay. It's just how you like to play them. I get it. It makes sense to me. Uh, you know what I don't like? I don't like dice that um, are transparent and are marbled colored. So like the show, the convention we have here, they for the longest time would always give you dice. And um, hell, I could do a whole episode just on dice. And they would have the name of the convention on them, but invariably they were always marbled. The problem with them being marbled is if there's something written on them, it doesn't stand out really well. Okay? Um, nice. That's those dice in here. That sounded like a lot of bouncing, and it was just two of them. Talk about dice. Okay, let me use. <laughs> dice! Alright. So here's one. Here's another pinky. Okay, here's one of ours. HMGS South 2008. Has a little palm tree, right? But it's marble. This is a bad example because this one's actually really clear. 2016. But like this one, you see, it's all like, hold on, let me get it in the right place. This is 2017. It has a little rat on there. I think it was some kind of plague theme. I forget what it is. It was some kind of theme for the whole convention. And, you know, I don't really like the marbled. Um, actually, these aren't bad. They're actually really clear. Let me see if I can find one that isn't. Here's the North American... Nassimo, I forget, North, 
North American Society of Ancients and Medieval War Games. You know, I'd prefer that to just be an orange one. You know, what else do we have on there? Oh, the D. The, so these are the ones made by Coplow Kopl Games, made a series of. Um, out of that group, my favorite is that orange die with a black pips. You're going to think favorites. <laughs> I could do a whole show on dice. Although I'm sure you have a ton more than I do. Um, which is funny because I never had a bunch of D6s. Because when I first started playing DBA, here's another one. HMGS South, Recon, Aces High. Look at this one. That's kind of cool. Um... Uh, Coplow game make, make, made a series of dice called Country Dice. And they made a U.S. and a U.K. and an Ireland and a, a Belgium, uh, France. Is this the France one? No, this is just a standard blue one. Nothing's, nothing to see here. This one's nice. Could do this one for my Bronze Age. Probably use this one for my um, Amorites since it's Bronze Age and it's bronze. Actually, nice looking dice there. Uh, another pinky. Um... A D10? What the hell is that all about? I don't like this size dice. They're too small. I, I like this, whatever size this is. 16 millimeter? I don't know. Let's see. See if we can find a better favorite for you there, Rick. All right. HMGS Soft. This is our, our logo. Just the Bonnie Blue. We'll put them over here. Here's the France one from the Country Dice. Okay, here's another Nassimois. Red pips, a little weird. This is just standard yellow, standard yellow. Here's the Irish one from the country. It has, it has a silhouette of Ireland, including the northern part, including the northern part, okay? And on the six, and then it says Ireland on the two. No, I'm sorry, the Ireland is the, the country dice always have it on the, on the one. So you never wanna see that the one. That's why we call this one when you're playing the Germans and you roll a one. Um, I call it you getting you got deutscht. And then this one is is you got fucked by France when you're playing the French. But I do like these country dice. Uh, here's another one. HMGS South. I don't know what this is. Looks like a cross. Has a six on there. Kind of cool. Prefer solid colors over marble translucent ones? I do. Yeah, the country dice are fantastic. So they make a Spain one, which I didn't know about it. I'd like to get... My, I have a UK one. Look, here's another French one that I have. There's some guy named Dice Trader or whatever it is, and he supposedly trades them. This is just a fruity colored one. This is... Oh, another Irish one. Yeah, somebody on eBay was selling these, and I got like five of each and... The boys got some of them as well. Okay, so here's an example of a diet shitty. Okay. So, it's marbled, black pips, right? Real easy to see. However, the name of the convention is in light green. Like, first of all, there's no other light green on this die. Like, why are you introducing yet another color in here? It's the same pattern as this one. I don't know how I got this light green one, but this this thing, yeah, no bueno. All right, what else we got? And this is just some of them. Was it you that said it was such a bad idea for conventions to put their logo on the one so that over time people start to resent seeing the convention logo because it means they rolled poorly? Absolutely right. Unless you're playing Axis and Allies, you don't want to roll a one on a V6. Okay, our, our, other, our other convention that we have here in, in Jacksonville, which I've only been to it a couple times because there's not really a big turnout for historical stuff, Rapier. They just have their simple name, Rapier. Look, they have a black die that has... The, see, this is a good-looking die. You know, it's simple. And I do like the ones with the rounded corners. Square corner stuff like this, I'll use it, but... Eh. Rapier. I guess it's turned into a die podcast. Yeah. Uh, what else we got here? Just a plain green and white one. Oh, I got a, I got a couple fun ones in here. This one I tend to use this one for Armenians a lot. It's just kind of a 
kind of the color of their Arme the Armenian little banner that's kind of this dark red. What else do we got here? HMGS South. This is a was a Roman theme one. So I pretty much just collect these because I never go and use them after the convention. Like while the convention is going on, I use this one the entire time. It's kind of the the principle of it. I don't. Oh, and here's an a Russian theme one. Okay, this is a Russian theme. This is actually a Russian double headed imperial eagle. Okay. Yeah, they. This is what they, this is what they have. They just. They don't have, they, they pick one and that's what they have. So here's another NASM one in marbled blue. Kind of hard to see like the three. Like you don't want to watch this on video. You can't see them. They don't turn out well. We're getting there. We're getting there. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> What's this? Recon 2017. This is an Africa theme. So there was a little Africa. I don't know if you can make that out. But these are all HMGS South dice. Of course, you can buy extras. You get one free with your registration. I don't buy extras. They could just end up rolling worse. Here's another clear NASM one. This is a clear one. Like, why don't you guys just make a solid colored one? I don't know. Uh, what's this? Here's another purple NASM one. Again, kind of hard to make out in videos if we're going to use this. What's this? This is one of my favorite ones. It's just a Florida thing. I like I like things that have our penis shaped state on them. I just do. I'm a fan of Florida shaped things. So um, if you don't like Florida, don't come visit us. We got enough people we don't like here already. Damn it. <laughs> what else do we got here? Oh, here's a Funkadelic one. Look at this. This almost looks like oil. Again, kind of a cool dice. Don't want to use it in a video. It doesn't turn out well. We're getting there, Greg. We're getting there. Um, another NASM. Is that the same as this one? Yep. Another HMGS South. Yeah, this one's on the one. I think our convention now changed to being on the six. I think enough of us complain. But again, black pips, why is the logo not black? It's white. Like, you're introducing another color, dude. What's... Okay, these are undersized. Just a little red one. Here's another HMGS South. How did this turn into a... How did this turn into a dice show? Oh, well. I like dice. Here's another Motley Crue looking one. All right, we got some interesting stuff here. So, I don't have a Spanish dice, so I have one with the Spanish numbers set on it which this is the best i could do it's the a kind of an oversized so i'm not a huge fan of this one but this of course is my asian one which i love using my my kanji one with my kanji armies so there's a one easy to remember right it's it's got like a little barb on there like a harpoon like there's one right and two is two harpoons three is three harpoons the one that is a box is four because it has four sides. Of course, there's stuff in the middle on there. And then you skip the six. This is the karate chop guy going, yeah. You, know, you want to see that when you're rolling it. And then the one that's none of those is this one. This is a five. And somebody actually mentioned to me, oh, it has a four in it. Yeah, it kind of does. That's how you read the kanji one. Another weird die. The Arabic dice. Oh, Arabic numerals. Shouldn't they be like our standard numerals? Oh, that would make sense, wouldn't it? No, this does not make sense. Again, here is a one. Two has a little curly Q on it. The two little curly Qs is a three. Four is... Shoot, I don't remember. I think it's this one. And then this one's five. And then six is the curly Q in the other direction. So that's six. And then two is this one. 
I forget if I think this one's five actually, and four is this one. I don't know. Um, and uh, yes, how could I forget? So Australian Greg came down here, and I had the other one somewhere. I did not lose it, and he brought us some kangaroo dice. There's a a um, went to Historicon and he gave everybody. A, it was nice enough to give everybody a set of these kangaroo dice, which have a kangaroo on the. Is it on the six? No, it's on the one. Yeah. So it didn't take me long to figure out, you know, when you're using this, you know, you got rude when you rolled a one, you know. But, all right, well, we're talking about dice, so let's go grab my other ones. Turn into a dice show. I don't have that many. These are the ones I travel with normally. The three symbol is a four, and the zero symbol is a four. Got it. <laughs> the zero symbol, I believe, is a five. Okay, we've got Roman numeral dice, right? Use those when you're playing Romans. Durr. Uh, what else we got here? D10s, D10s. D10s, nothing to see here. Nothing exciting. Like, this D10 sucks. I, I don't, you know, I don't like that. Now, these D10s, when I was playing naval games, okay, they use percentile. So if you're playing Italians, you would use red and, red and uh, you need a tens digit and a green one. So I, I would use something like that. If you're playing um, British or something like that, you would use a red one. Like this clear orange one, like why do I have this? Like this is useless. Um, I have a wooden one. Woo -hoo. Um, these are cool. These are kind of unique. This would be a good army for like the freaking Huns or something like that, Mongols. So you've got these skulls, and they're indent indented. Kind of cool dice. I picked up a couple of those. I, don't ask me where. I don't know that I've ever even used them. Uh, what else we got here? Another Rapier 2012. We got, oh boy. I don't know where the manual is for this one. I believe this is. I don't know if this is Hindu. I've never used this one. I can go online and find it. I believe this is Hindu symbols. I've played Hindu armies. I've just never used it. I got to find my, my thing on there. I got a Hebrew one. Okay. Um, I don't have a Hebrew army yet, but. I will, hopefully, at some point. Uh, what else? This one's Korean, supposedly. I don't know what the hell these ones are either. You know? They make a Thai one that's really pretty because this Thai character is really neat. Um, here's the Great British one. The Great Brit the Great British one, yes. <laughs> the Great Britain one. Yeah, I got a couple of those. Two. Some guy was selling them on eBay. I wish I could find those Spanish ones. Guy out in uh, Washington State, uh, Paul Hanna, we did a trade many years ago, and he sent me some, conven some convention dice from his convention in Canada called Falcon. So, what are they on? They're on the one as well. Damn Falcon! So... He sent me a couple of those. Those are cool. Oh, I'm not going to see them. I'm going to put them over there. There we go. Go this way. There we go. What else we got out here? So here you got D10s. You got these D10s that, well, these are D8s. But they have kind of the sharper corner. I prefer I prefer the rounded one. In case you were wondering. Um, it's a Rapier 2013 also. Um, here's another 2012 one. And this is also, this is a 2010 one. Um, what else do I have here of interesting? So, I don't know how I got this Flamingo one. I would, I don't know. I live in Florida. You don't see Flamingos that often. Trust me. What's your new favorite one? The Skull one? Here's the Irish one. 
Here's another Irish one. The McDice. What about ones that have numerals on them? I've had these a long time. I'm not a big fan of them. This one's not bad. Useful for using in a lot. I think last time I used this, I played my Tang. My Tang Chinese. Just kind of the color of my Tang are. Oh, here's another convention. What's this one? Recon 2018. I think this was a cavalry. Kind of like a U.S. cavalry symbol. But again, it's marbled, so you can't tell very well what it is. I don't know. Nobody asked me. Um, anything else here of interest? I do have one for wind direction. North, northwest, northeast. Two of those, actually. Three of those, actually. Keep going. Keep it going. And I got small ones for a naval game I was doing that had small ones. Speaking of small ones. Dee, 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 dee. Aww, ain't he cute? I know I got more of those. Yeah, these small size things are just really awkward to, to use. So. Did I get the Flamingo Dice in Vegas? Never been there. Never been to Vegas. We almost went and then... Uh, COVID happened. No big deal. You do like numeral D6s when I'm using other polyhedral dice that also have numerals. That makes sense. That makes sense. You don't want to be rolling um, this and then this along with it. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. That's, that, that would keep me up at night too. Anyhow. Yeah, I don't have anything exciting here. Where is the other Rue dice? Uh-oh. It's here somewhere, Greg. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, the other one is black with, um, with other symbols. It's in here somewhere. Is that it? No. Anyhow, that's, that's the dice. Now I'll go play, now I'll go play, I won't have anyone with me. I don't have that many. Now, if they had other cooler things, themed things, I would absolutely get some, but they're not that exciting, so. I have hundreds of those tiny dice. I use them to keep track on how many figures. Yeah, I can see that. Except they're hard to grab. And you know what's even worse? Oh, so here's a story. I got these two. So this thing was full. Cool. The girls are using some of them right now. So I was playing a Flames of War game several years ago against this opponent who was using these dice. And um, he was ruling like total shit. And he kept saying he was going to get rid of those dice, he was getting rid of those dice. And I'm like, I'll use those dice against you. And he just, I started using with one dice and whooped the, and beat the crap out of him. And he just said, here, you can have them. So, I have all of these. Like, I don't know why I would ever have all of these dice that look exactly the same. Um, you know. And, um, what are the girls using for? Some dice game they play. I don't know what it is. But, you know, that's, that's how I ended up getting these pink dice. Which, I don't mind using pink dice. It's, it's nothing like whooping somebody's ass with, with pink dice. Somebody who really cares, like, it doesn't bother me any, but some people are like, those dice are sissy. Well, you just got your ass beat, son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I have a, a board game called, I think it's called Dice Capades, and it comes with all kinds of crazy dice in there as well. There's some really weird stuff. So... You like those marbled pink? I like them too. They just don't stand out really well. They don't. They don't pop. They're a little small, but dude, they're cute. Um, they actually marbled nicely, you know. Um, I guess the marbled ones I don't mind as long as whatever color is on them is is probably like black, so it stands out. Um, unless it's marbled really, really dark, then white would be okay. But. Um, 
Okay, well, that was a nice little uh, distraction there. That was a nice little dice capade. <laughs> okay. I don't have that many. So there's some some website, I forget what it's called, and the Dice Man Cometh or something like that. Some guy, the Dice Man or whatever, he supposedly has things that he can trade, that he has extras. He's just, I don't know that he plays games or anything. So he's got some of those country dice, but he's like, nah, I can't trade them. I'm like, okay, well, that's the only thing you have that would even interest me. And I didn't want a bunch of them. I just wanted one, you know. So um, no big deal. The dice dude, the dice, I don't know what it is. Planet dice. That was a fine, that was a fun little sidetrack there. There's somebody who has dice stuff on a YouTube channel. Like cock dice. We play, you guys have seen our games. We play all cock dice. The problem isn't that you're playing cock dice. The problem is, is that sometimes you play them and sometimes you don't when they do or don't benefit you. That's the problem. It's a morality issue, not the fact that the dice are cocked. So we just always, I mean, unless it like lands in like a field of pikes where it's not touching the ground, um, we pretty much play whatever you see because it's it's obvious that what the die roll is, you know. But um, that's what it is. It's just being consistent. So if you're consistent, then it isn't an issue. It doesn't really matter that the dice is cocked. It matters that you're just being consistent and applying the, you know, the fairness of it. So um, I never understood why people got to do a reroll. Like why, you know. Now on the floor, it's weird because, you know, um, somebody's going to pick it up. Somebody may pick it up before you get a chance to see what rolls on it. So the floor doesn't really work, you know. But other than that, we're rolling on the table. Yeah, it, it pretty much counts, at least in our group. So as long as you're consistent, it's what matters. That's right. Be honorable. None of that flim flam bullshit, you know. No flim. Don't be salesy. <laughs> Those um, D4s and D10s. I think I had a set of black. You know, way back when, when Chessex used to make, I mean, I mean, shit, they're like 40 years old. 40? Could they be 40 years old? Nah, they're probably 35 years old. Of, You know, they would make a, a, a D6 and an 8 and a 10 and a 20 and a 4. And it would all come in one set, and one of each, one in each color. So I've got a, a black one with white numerals. I've got a white one with black numerals. I've got a yellow one with black room. I don't know why. I don't know why I have a yellow one with black numerals. I just I must have thought it was a I must have thought it was cool at some point. But um yeah, I haven't used those in thirty years ago probably or something like that. The problem with a cup the problem with a cup is that we like to slam the cup down because it's fun and then you bump troops. But um, the cup is really useful because some people I play with, if you, they need to be zipped up in a tent. You know, like one of those tents that can be zipped up in their mesh so they can roll in there so that the dice don't go over which way. I'm not going to name any names, but they don't like wearing shoes on camera, okay? Um, when we're playing games over his place. So um, it keeps them from the dice going every which way and staying on the thing. Hello? Do you need me? Hmm? Don't send me a text. 
I'm being summoned. I'll be right back. So yeah, the problem with it with the cups is they're fun to use, but things get bumped, which is unfortunate. But it does help other people I play with a lot because they're very I mean, I occasionally will roll something on the floor, but it's like once every other game at or less. Not every and they just get on a roll, like they'll roll on the floor, and then they go pick it up and then they roll it again on the floor. It's like they like overcorrecting and it's like, oh man. You know? Oh, well. <laughs> oh, man. I do like the dice cup. I do like the dice cups, though. Despite that they bump the troops. It is fun. What time is it? Oh, we got two hours and seven minutes. All right, we'll give this another five minutes or so, and then we'll go. We'll go do the other things that we need to do tonight, because the clan's back now, from uh, from what they were doing. So, didn't think I was going to be talking about dice, but that works. I I like dice. I know lots of people that are spooked by them too. There's a name for that. It's called Sissies. <laughs> the big sissy, it's a dice. Cannot for the life of me find a cross keyed symbol D6. Yeah, probably can't. That's all right. Just use one that's either red with white pips. Probably would do it. Red with white pips would probably be the way to do it. I've already got some of those. Gregory Pumfret. Greetings from New South Wales, Australia. I've been thoroughly enjoying following your battles over the last few months. Well, thank you. Hopefully, you guys were. Out of your lockdown by now, uh, a custom die will be necessary. I wouldn't even know how to go about that. And then you got to buy too many of them. Um, it'll work. I just use the red one with uh, white with uh, white pips. I already got one of those. Or I just use the pink one. Like I, I love using that pink dice. I love it. Pinky. And sometimes it just kicks total butt too. You just never know what what day of the week it's going to be. The one where it kicks butt or the one where it lays down? I have a feeling he's not going to do well because the army is very defensive. So, but there's lots of things I can do to him. They can have... Uh, they can have an ally, which means I can replace three of their units. You could replace the Saloy if you wanted to to make them... Uh, buff them up some um, you could um, they could actually have two allies which in which case you could replace four units um, but then you know you've got to move 
you can't combine them with another command. So, still in lockdown. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, I think Greg was telling me it was going to be a pretty intensive lockdown for like a week or something like that. Hopefully it's not one of those, hey, you're going to be locked down for a week. Oh, guess what? No, it's a year. But, um, oh, well. At least you still get to watch videos, right? I still have the internet. There'll be more battles. We just got to, we got to get these guys knocked out so we can do a whole host of papal battles. Actually, I'm looking forward to it being cooler. I go where it's not a freaking oven. Because we're basically, the room that we play in is, is, for lack of a better term, a shed. It's almost like a shed at the back of his house. It's not insulated. And it does have two air conditioning units, but, you know, they don't work great. And, um, and they're loud. So, you know, just one of those things. Painting Greek light infantry at the moment. Oh, Saloy! Never underestimate the Saloy. I can't say that I've lost a game because of Saloy, but I've won games because of them. I can't say that I sat down and I played a game and all my Saloy got killed and they cost me the game. It was more like they did some kind of crazy exploit and showed up where they weren't expected or something like that. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up because it's been on here a little while. Instead of playing games, we did this. Hopefully, we'll we'll get the we'll get the rest of these crossbowmen done by the end of the week, over the weekend and stuff like that. And take pictures of them and see them in action next Monday. Hopefully, ha ha, could be a year. Oh boy. No, hopefully not. Okay, well, thanks, folks. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate all of you coming by and entertaining me. Hopefully I did the same. And um, maybe we can... Um, so we talked about dice. What's next? Dice bags. <laughs> well, until next time, thanks for coming by and happy painting and uh, enjoy what's left of your um, Monday. Uh, it's all downhill from here, right? The rest of the week should be easy.